Welcome to the Author It Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Derek. And I'm Jenna. <laughs> and this is my podcast now about anything and everything off-road. Uh, Ross is still MIA. He will be back. We, we've been texting. Uh, I believe the um, the text today was, it's either it's pure chaos here or it's a shit show, one of the two. So um, <laughs> either way, considering I have four kids, it's like the constant state that we live in. So I think Ross is just adjusting to that new kid life. Um, as always, the show is socially distanced. So we started doing the show before the pandemic, like January of 20, January, 2020. And so like, we've always recorded on video because Ross is in Connecticut and I'm in Kansas city. And so we like, the joke has been, we're socially distant because it's the only way we know how to do the show. Like we've never, <laughs> Ross and I have done hundreds of the, I shouldn't say hundreds, like 120 some odd episodes together. And we've never physically been in the same space. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a little weird. Like yeah. I, I know a dude completely through the internet only, which is starting to be more common, but like, <laughs> right. Yeah. The amount of time he and I have discussed things and never been in the same spaces. Like my grandparents are like, I don't understand that. And I was like, it's fine. It's just modern pen pals. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as always, I'm still in Kansas city and you guys are in Arkansas. So this is one of the very rare shows where both sets of people are in the same time zone. Oh, oh, really? right. yeah. Well, yeah. Ross is on the East Coast, so we're always yeah. at least two, and then generally yeah. our guests are uh, Pacific or Mountain Time Zone. So, sure. um, I think the closest we had is like we had somebody within like twenty miles of him, which was which oh, is wow. kind of cool. So, yeah, uh, and I think Chris Holloway, who does the the Midwest off Midwest Overland and Off Road Expo down in Springfield, I think he's uh -huh. Kansas City based too. And so, like the one yeah. the one night we had him on, yeah. um, <laughs> over well, honored I, exactly. I have no real updates for the show other than that I'm still living in adv adventure van land all the time. Um, I do have a, kind of a call to to regular listeners um, because Ross is kind of on hiatus. I'm booking guests and um, I'm only really brainstorming myself. So if you're a regular listener and there's someone that you think we should talk to or talk about, shoot me a message and I will try to line them up. Um, turns out people are still saying yes, which is hilarious to me. You guys did. <laughs> <laughs> we did <laughs> yeah well there's bribery <laughs> oh crap don't don't set that standard <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the uh, show's budget is already blown so <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so great um i wanted to have you guys on because we've spent a number of expos now together uh working for van do it out at expo west and mountain west um, and you're generally nice people to hang out with. So um, <laughs> that, that's literally that's the only sense. reason. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah, exactly. Like I didn't walk away going, man, those two, I don't know. <laughs> Which some, sometimes at an expo, you do walk away from people. Uh, like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's favorite part of that, yeah. Favorite part of the expo is meeting all types. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so the reason I wanted to have you guys on, you have spent a lot of time in a van. Is that yeah. is that accurate? <laughs> Would it, yeah. Do you want to put a qualifier on it? Was there were there years? Well, yeah. we got the van in May 2020. Okay. And we pretty much weekend warriored it or like took a month or took two weeks at a time. And then last summer we pretty much went full time. <laughs> okay. So weekend warrior means like just weekend trips kind of thing, like shoot out, ride mountain yeah. bike somewhere, shoot back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we we had longer two week trips or so here and there, but for the most part, a lot of it was coming down here to mountain bike. Okay, just and from then, Kansas City because it's just you know it's three and a half hours, so we'd camp mountain bike. Uh, my uh, I refer to him as Kid Two Point Oh. He's my my second kid. Uh, he has already been pushing for when are we going to Bentville? When are we going to Northwest? Uh, oh, it's like, yeah. homie, like calm down you're not even riding the trails here well yet like I don't, <laughs> I don't need you on super technical stuff and the best well, well the best was go ahead, go ahead uh well last sunday i took him out for just a brief ride and i took my oldest with me because he he has a uh a large frame um rock hopper yeah yep i always forget if it's rock hopper because i had a hard rock like years ago and so like yeah. for me the the model name shouldn't be confusing but they are He's yeah. got a he's got 29 inch wheels and like we yeah. were in the woods and he was rolling up to stuff and he was like slowing down and getting off and like moving the bike. I was like, homie, you have 29 inch wheels. You have no idea how much that's going to soak up. The, not only the <laughs> impact in the front suspension, like you're just going to go right over it. He's like, yeah, I just don't trust it yet. 
Like that's fine, but like you need to start trying some things. So yeah, you put him on a twenty-six inch for a little while, and he'll uh, he'll notice the difference. Right. So, and the the problem is my my second son. He's on a twenty-four inch. So oh, wow. Yeah. That was his his uh, Christmas gift last year, and I was already like, and it, it's only going to last about a year. Like he's already yeah. like outgrown it. Yeah. Damn it. So I probably should just yeah. throw him on the 26 last year, but yeah. Well, sweet. Um, I don't think we. I, I'm going to ask you this question: Like, what are you currently driving? I know currently driving. <laughs> we have a 2019 Van Do It Live model. Live model. So for those who don't speak Van Do It. You have a Ford, Ford Transit. Transit. No. <laughs> this is the reminder that I have is like you, you and and I will speak a different language. <laughs> Which is that's the hard thing. Like when I talk to people who have no idea like what the company offers. And so like I'm talking to them the first time, and I'm like, are you familiar with the models? And they're like, transit. I'm like, hold on, let's let's backpedal here. We gotta we gotta introduce yeah. some things. So yeah. li- live model means uh queen size bed in the back. Hydraulic lift really is your big difference. Difference, mm-hmm. difference. Ugh, words are hard, um, <laughs> and that's basically yeah. it. So your long chassis, yes, yeah, we're the XLT. I mean, it's yeah. So we're not the EL, right? Which is the twenty-two the footer. You're the nineteen right. footer, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, my favorite yeah. part is like I always knew I was talking to Sprinter people because they they introduced themselves based on wheelbase. Uh, oh yeah and that yeah. is so foreign to me yeah someone's like, like yeah i have a 440 i'm like you have a who <laughs> yeah that's an engine um <laughs> literally <laughs> now we're talking cubic inches uh if your wheelbase is 440 inches we need to have a conversation because you're like an australian <laughs> land train basically <laughs> oh, i just look at them with deer and headlights and they say that stuff <laughs> yeah because it's always like i drive a one or i'm a, I'm a 144 or i'm a 170 and i was like well you're definitely driving sprinters and these are transit so let's continue yeah. this conversation now knowing we're talking ford <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right so queen bed in the back gear slide beneath all kinds of fun storage options yeah um what what do you guys think is the best part of van life because it can it can be it has varied with people i've talked to <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a a lot of things like, and they all have their different places and the and the response to that. And so, I mean, the big one is being able to explore and go places for pretty much however you, how long you want to be there to stop and explore. Cause you don't have to, you're not paying to rent a hotel or anything. And so you get to stop. Are you still there? I'm still there. I forgot, oh. <laughs> forgot to tell you, I'll share pictures so I don't have to go in and edit them later. Uh, oh nice so is the van (laughs) there's the van yeah and so but yes like what i was saying so like being able to go places and stay hypothetically as long as you want because you aren't having to pay rent and so it is cheaper um and be able to see all the cool stuff on the way to get to the place we were going that's one of the coolest things about it too yeah right yeah i mean having all your stuff is to be able to just jump out mountain bike jump on a boat blow up a boat, get on a river or a lake those are the those are the things that are fun about it really i was like uh, wait a minute i i got a picture of you and barry in a boat <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, yeah he loves getting in the boat we probably should have introduced barry's their adventure dog <laughs> i didn't <laughs> Uh, they're just gonna people just listening to the show are gonna be like who's this barry guy like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's our i guess he's four-year-old chocolate lab now yep and he mm-hmm. loves biking boating <laughs> sleeping in the van yeah, but... <laughs> dude he's fantastic like because I've, I've spent two two sets of what 10 days with him now like total like <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah you've, you've seen a good amount of him like i've never seen him misbehave like he is the chill i mean side note your guys business is a dog training school so like you sh- you should have a well-mannered dog <laughs> yeah I mean, we did we did get kind of lucky on him though he didn't he didn't take a lot of work to he just kind of naturally has been pretty awesome pretty easy but yeah his, his biggest deal is just barking at dogs he'll see a dog and his hello is a very big deep loud 
lab yeah. art. You know, like, and he's just super happy. But he, uh, that's definitely his, I guess, his biggest downfall. Ah, uh, eating some water. <laughs> For the listening audience, it's a photo with water in the air and Barry with his mouth wide open. So <laughs> yeah. the best part that is that Jim has next to us. So Jim is one of my training clients. We trained three therapy dogs of his. And okay. so his comment is, in my next life, I want to come back as your dog. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is where we let you know, like, there is an explicit tag on the show. You can make some adult references if you want to, because that could go a number of ways, Jim. So we could... <laughs> We're not going to explore all of them, <laughs> but I mean, Barry's bark is loud, but like every other, like, as soon as you hear the bark and you look at the dog, you're like, okay, that dog's not mad. Nothing about that dog says yeah. I'm right. misbehaving. Like he's yeah. super like chill. Just too far away. I need to come. You need to come closer to me to say hello to. Well, and at the shows half the time, he's like laying in the van and he's just letting yeah. you know, I'm about to come out of the van and come talk to you. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> He's fantastic that way. <laughs> he is a good dude. A good dude. So you've been in the van. You went full time last summer. Um, wh- where have you been now? Because obviously, so it's not, and some people like when they get the vans, they don't they don't move around a lot. They stay like fairly centrally located near wherever it is their jobs are and things like that. Yeah. Where are you guys going? Holy smokes! So. We were, so our home base was Kansas City. Now it's Arkansas. Okay. So from Kansas City, we went to all the way to California. And so through Colorado, the Arizona, the Arizona. The Arizona. Arizona. Nevada, <laughs> um, I believe all, the Ohio State University has an argument <laughs> with you now. <laughs> so yeah, my brother lives out in California. So we made a trip out there. Um, and my mom has a teardrop trailer. And so she joined us with pulling her trailer. So that was a lot of fun. Wait, so and you then, pulled her trailer with the van? No, she okay. drove her car pulling it next to us. <laughs> I know we're, we're close to pulling her trailer. Bro. You've considered so, it, haven't you? You've thought about yeah, it. <laughs> we just need a little suspension. <laughs> a little suspension, a little jump seat, maybe? Yep. yep. One more seat belt. Yep. We definitely jump seat it. Because I, I have definitely spent time in your van not in a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. For the, for the listening audience, there is one more seat in the van. It just doesn't have a seatbelt. Yeah, it doesn't have a seatbelt. No. May, maybe uh, is a place where you do some business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And to be honest, fully functional. Worked out great. Got, yeah. got around perfectly around Flagstaff. All right. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I interrupted. So California. Yeah, so all the way to California and back, taking our time. That was about a three-month trip Good last Lord. fall. And then last January or February, we went down to the Baja and did all of winter in Baja, Mexico. And came back in May and took our time getting back to the Midwest. And then we just recently had a few months from Arkansas to Maine up okay. into Canada, down to South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado, and now we're here in Arkansas. All right. So you went from <laughs> Arkansas to Maine, up across Canada, and yep. then came back down to meet us in Loveland, and then came yep. back to Arkansas. Well, yeah, we only, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we crossed back uh, from Canada into the U.S., uh, in detroit so we didn't go like across canada we came halfway yeah still like not, maine not to that. detroit though like that like going up and over like that's you got to go through at least toronto right like oh yeah that yeah that, that was, was, so busy. <laughs> that was traffic. yeah that was not quite <laughs> we, oh, wasn't quite super fun i wouldn't call it fun we passed toronto and went towards niagara falls to see it on the canadian side and it was so bad getting through Toronto. It was supposed to be a two and a half, three hour drive. And it took us six. What? It was so, so much traffic that we were so close to just go through Buffalo and do the States coming back to get to Loveland instead of backtracking. <laughs> so we're like, we, it's unpredictable, but it actually, it wasn't bad whenever we backtracked to Detroit, <laughs> but yeah. it wasn't fun thinking of how bad it could be. Did you guys do Montreal? We yeah. did. Sort of. Sort of. 
we got a parking ticket (laughs) so it was very much practice france like you got you got a parking (laughs) ticket like that's right yeah yeah it was very much so uh yeah we got a parking ticket and then after that tried to get more into downtown montreal to meet up with some people we were with and that didn't work out very well. We couldn't find parking, you know, in a van downtown Montreal. Not, not great. I mean, we could have figured it out, I'm sure, but we were kind of hungry and Angry. ready to get back to the campsite at that point. So. Well, and I think of your van, like your van's not huge. Like it for the two of you, no. I, I think of it as like the sports car version of what we, yeah. what we yeah. see leave the factory quite a bit. Like you don't have a big lift on it. Like it's you just got the yeah. all terrains. Yeah. And it doesn't feel crazy long. Like it feels I very think, reasonable. The yeah. biggest thing is we have that uh, Velocirax bike rack on it, and so yeah. that's adding what would you say three feet? Yeah, it's good three feet. Three feet of bike rack on the end, and that's the kicker is that a lot of times we're sticking out. Right. So yeah, that adds then, another layer to it. But the van itself, is a lot smaller. Yeah, usually parking is not an issue. It's it's. The main issue in Montreal was like it was pretty much all parallel parking. Oh no! Which in a van, even without a bike rack, it just you can it's it's you can do it, but it, it just it takes it's, me getting out. It's of the tight, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tight. That was so. When you guys went to Maine, and I'm going to ask this question specifically because I had a guest on last week who was just back northeast as well. Did you do any mountain bike parks up that way? So. Yes and no. We <laughs> not in Maine. I wanted to in Maine. We didn't end up having enough time while we we're in that area. We went up to Quebec City okay. and uh, rode a mountain bike park there. That was pretty amazing. If there's so, a home, that was it for Derek. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. amazing. Bre- breweries and mountain bike parks. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Just breweries and mountain bike oh, parks. Yeah. I know yeah, Derek's yeah, itinerary. Yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if we, I mean, if you could get one out on some nice BLM land, mountain biking and a brewery, that would that'd be it. Be done. So you just be moving little spots every fourteen days, like you just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, little... yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never run out of gas, right? You wouldn't right. have to. Like you just right. hope hope somebody brings a plug in for you and you're good. Like... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So I asked that because the guest I had on last week is my editor at Hooniverse and he was back in New Hampshire and he went to a place called Highland Park in New Hampshire. Um, And it like, I'm not good at mountain biking. I'm aware of that. But I looked at that place and was like, holy crap, we need to go over there because it was a downhill park. Like it was like lifts up, just chill. And then he said they had a a bunch of just like chill riding off to the side as well. It was like New New Hampshire woods. I'm like, all right, well. All right, we need to look that up. Yeah. What's it called? Highland Park? Yeah, I'll shoot you an IG link later. Like you'll you'll look at the yeah. photos and be like, um, we're getting in the van. We'll see you later. Yeah, we weren't very long. We had a family wedding that the family we we're with, we all were going to Canada, so we're kind of not our own timeline then. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the downside sometimes. We travel yeah, with other yeah. people. <laughs> exactly. it like, it happens. Yeah, that was like that content work trip that we did after Flagstaff. I loved would that would love to have chilled in Flagstaff a little longer. Like I felt like we yeah. didn't really see much of it. So oh, I love Flagstaff. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I feel like you could find some pretty good content in Flagstaff too, really. Yeah, I didn't I, uh other than the fact that um we wanted to go to Cinders and they'd had a forest fire and so like all uh, of that yeah. area was closed down. And so yeah. we'll we'll have to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Someday. Yeah, I <laughs> I feel like that's each one of the spots. Every place I've been to, I'm like, well, we didn't really see anything. We were there a total of eight hours. We took photos, like, let's go. Like, yep. yeah. Need to borrow another one. <laughs> yeah. But that's why you just get your own van and go out. <laughs> you mean get my second mortgage? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep borrowing for a little bit. So I got to sell some as long more as bands you can first. pull that gig, that's a good gig to do. Yeah. Well, and for me with all the kids, it's always an EL. Yeah. So, yeah. Because yep. I got to go three bunks in the back to be able to sleep everybody, which we did. I don't know if I told you the story about going out to Silverthorne and, and staying. Uh, we have family that's out in Silverthorne and near Dillon. And so they don't have a very big place. And so we used an EL do as a mobile guest house, basically. Oh, we just nice. pulled up a, out front and slept yeah. in the van and then we'd go inside to do everything else. And then go back in the yeah. van and go back. Yeah. Well, it's almost easier doing it that way. Everything's in the van. It's almost harder to move everything out 
to just yeah. move it back in. Well, and the glory of the storage tower with the kids is each kid gets a shelf. So yeah. Yeah. they're like, where's my stuff? I'm like, where's your shelf? Like, it's not, once you yeah. remove it from your shelf, it's on you. Like that's <laughs> personal responsibility. You got to handle that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. You mentioned Baja and we always, we tend to focus on Baja on the show because I've never been and Ross has never been on to Baja yet. And you guys oh. went as first timers. Yeah. So I always ask people what their advice is for Baja and the consistent theme. And I think I've told you this before is never eat tacos from something with wheels. Oh, mm. contraire though. Cause sometimes <laughs> those food trucks are the best. So yeah. I think their thing was, if it goes bad, you can't ever go back the next day kind of thing to be like, what did I eat? Oh, right, right, right. They're not there to <laughs> take responsibility. Exactly. It's Mexico. <laughs> Who's taking responsibility? Like, right. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things where something happens here in Mexico. It's generally just you're looking at something nice. It's hard to be too angry about it. Right. Well, yeah. that was like, beautiful outside. So. Yeah. Well, and that was like your your guys' Instagram for a while it was just like beaches. Yeah. yeah. Right, because and it's so pretty. What we didn't realize about the Baja is that, like, we knew there were mountains there, but the entire peninsula, there is a mountain range in the middle. And so you're looking at the ocean, and then right behind you are mountains. And so you have, like, both of the most beautiful views pretty much at all times down the very, like, southern tip um, near, like, Cabos and stuff. There's not as much mountain stuff, but everywhere else. Oh, my gosh, it was so beautiful. Especially the Retto. Oh, you're yeah. just surrounded by mountains and then water. And it gets so deep so fast that all the wildlife comes to the shore so much closer. So whales are like right there. Dolphins are right there. Really? It's amazing. Yeah. Can't remember yeah. the last time I saw whales. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if you're out there long enough, it's uh you're gonna see some motion life. Yeah. So we had this routine where Derek wakes up, makes coffee, takes Barry out while I'm in bed, and then I start working in bed without ever getting down for a little while. And one morning Derek just started screaming, Jenna. And I was like, what the <laughs> heck is happening? And he heard a blowhole, like oh. the water going. Yeah. And so then he stood on top of the roof and saw a blue whale going like really close to the like the beach. And so we all got, we're with another couple. We all ran to the beach and saw this whale just like casually going by. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, and like, we're team no coast. Like we don't ever get whales. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, you did. We saw, oh no, that was a whale shark. Yeah, even even know. that's fairly rare. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that was actually a that was a previous Baja trip. That, so this trip wasn't our first time, but it was definitely the first time driving a vehicle down. We've flown down there a couple times and rented a car and just kind of hopped around some of the cities down in the, uh, the southern tip area. But um, so on on one of those trips, we actually took a uh, what is it? Hey. Excursion deal uh, from a tourist place in La Paz, and we actually got to swim with sea sea lions, sea lions, and whale sharks. Yes, and it was amazing. That was crazy. That's rad. Like that. Yeah. 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 Like the only whale sharks I've seen are like the Georgia Aquarium. Like that's not. Oh right. Yeah. Like as those things go by in there, you're like, that's massive, and I'm just here. Like. Yeah. To yeah. see it in the open water would be oh crazy. It is nuts, and they're doing a good job in La Paz for like conservation of them. Like, there's so many rules and laws that boaters have to follow to keep them safe. Like, they can only go so fast. They have to kill the engine if they spot one. So, I mean, it's still we're part of the problem, but I think they're doing a good <laughs> job to <laughs> the best they can for the freaking tourism humans. aspect. <laughs> can't stand humans sometimes i know i'm like i don't want to be part of the problem and do these excursions but i also want to see a whale shark so i am part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty it's, it's like a thin line all the time so right how do you how because i i think of the kids and i think of sand and beach how did you guys handle barry on the beach 
Oh my gosh. He loved it. And so the big thing is, is that he dries really quick because okay. he's a water dog. He has this waterproof um, fur on the outside. And so he dries so fast and we are in a dry climate. So thankfully, anytime he got wet, it did not last long. And so then it was just the sand and we have these body wipes. Um, they're called Clean Freak with a K. Okay. Um, they're at the expos. They're amazing. They are hands down like our favorite things. We wipe our feet off, ourselves off for like body wipes, but they're also dog friendly. And so we just give him, get one in each hand and wipe him down. And that seemed to do most of it. Was that the, um, that's the one you were like, wanted to go by them at the end of the show? Cause you're like score, whatever they had left over kind yep. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're just so nice too. And so it's always nice catching up with them at each show. Also. That's awesome. Yeah. They're the best thing. One of my favorite things. I tell everyone about it. <laughs> So this episode sponsored by Clean Freak. Uh, Clean Freak, you can go ahead and reach out. <laughs> you should see if there's an affiliate program because, like, I'm sure I've sold a half dozen. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna look them up. I like the amount of wipes we go through wiping kids down. Like, right? Yeah, no, they're, they're... and it's all natural, yeah, and they yeah, work. Of, of... So that that was your your plan was to run Barry around and get him tired. Yeah. <laughs> He ran himself tired and oh, he yeah. loved kids. And so we'd play fetch with them and be like, okay, I'm going to go find the kid because they're never going to stop playing fetch with me. Dude. So other people exercise Barry. <laughs> well, I, I did in Loveland. Like it was, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. he came over with his dog ball slash Frisbee yep. and was like, let's play. And I was like, all right. And then I forgot that I was pretty good at throwing a Frisbee and Barry was kind of tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he suckers you in. He'll he'll never stop. He might be tired, but he'll still bring it back to you. <laughs> exactly. Which at I mean at an expo, it's kind of calming to just hang out and yep. throw a frisbee with Barry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, back to Barry and Sam though. We we uh one of the big things that we bought before going down was uh kind of a like a waterproof blanket, kind of a thinner it's like a coverlet type thing for the back. Yeah whatever it, but it, it basically we knew he was going to get it sandy and whatever we didn't want it in our sheets and whatever right so he would get up there before we well he has this thing when it gets dark outside he wants to go in the van and go to sleep he just wants to go to bed so we put him up on the bed if he's not completely dry when we put him in bed he would be by the time we were going to bed all that sand would fall off onto that blanket we take him outside and just dump that blanket. Okay. That that pretty much did the trick for the most part. Besides, you know, drying him off, wiping him down with towels. Yeah, and that wipes, seems the bed. Because like I can handle having the dirty front seats, the dirty floors, like you know, hair and stuff places. But my bed needs to be clean, and so that was a big one: is getting that protective layer for Barry. And we shook it out every day, and then every time we did laundry, it was with the laundry. That was saving grace. Yeah. <laughs> it would be. Sand in your bed's not really one that thing that you want. Yeah, that's sand in the yeah, I can't. <laughs> I so where I spent three years down in Florida and like on the west coast, and so all the beaches are like that sugar sand. Yeah, and oh, it's yeah. just like it 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 gets everywhere. It's in car like we you wouldn't even go to the beach and it would be in your car and you're like how like yeah. <laughs> I just vacuum this it's in the car like it just it drives me nuts yeah so yeah is luckily, it if... no sorry, you go there the sand down there was I don't know we, everything we ran into was you knew you had sand on you it was kind of bigger grains yeah, whatever like coarser, so, yeah. yeah so it was easy to get off did you try to like the the like oil pan full of water like near the entrance to the van I mean, did you, did <laughs> you, you just no. not care like <laughs> no because uh well okay so there's a couple of reasons i guess one we always have a dog bowl okay a water bowl around for barry <laughs> and man you're literally just constantly kicking that thing over so like if we added another water thing somewhere around the van it would just like you you your feet would never be dry. It would just be constantly soaking your feet 
Yeah. We, so yeah, we, that's, that's a big reason. We stayed at a place up in Nebraska, like a little lake house, and like everything behind the house and the it's like a house and a bunkhouse together, and everything between there down at the lake is sand. And so the the entrance of everywhere they have these oil pans of water. It was like at a certain point it doesn't matter because everywhere, even around the oil pans, also sandy. Like yeah. I get to the point I was tired of having wet feet and then trying yep. to get them. Yeah, it just yeah. I like that place that we stay. I just don't like the sand. I just yeah. right. Yeah, well, plus, I mean, if you would have done that to your feet and then got in the van, there's sand in the van. There's no way we're going to keep all the sand out of the van. So you're just going to get your feet wet and then soak up more sand that was already in the van. Right. And that was like, that was the, uh, when we went to the salt flats with the two marketing vans, that yeah. 100% was like, and that stuff stuck to your shoes like mud. Yeah. And it was just all white. Yeah. Um, I will say like the best part though was like it was all over those dirt bikes when we got to Salt Lake City like we pulled the dirt bikes out sprayed them down and because it was a dew we could pull out those inserts yeah and spray those down in the wash bay and then come back yeah. to the van where the van's dry and just vacuum up everything else yeah um, oh, that's nice but yeah I'm never driving on the salt flats again if I don't have to yeah no, <laughs> no. it looks uh, cool <laughs> yeah pictures look great uh i took a bunch of awesome pictures of austin's motorcycle that i don't think i've shared on anything because it's like sunset and low angle and really pretty yeah. but like i just sent them to him i don't know what he did with them. <laughs> so kind of along the theme of sand what what yeah. is your least favorite part of van life i don't know i mean it's such a that's a hard question because i love all of it and i I don't know. I feel like the worst part about it is just the loneliness. Okay. Like I have Derek and we are best friends and we are with each other all the time. So we never get sick of each other, knocking all the wood. We get along very well. Um, And so like, it's nice having my best friend ever with me and having Barry, but at the end of the day, we are very social people. And so I think there's times where I'm like, well, I wish we'd call our friends, have them go meet us at the pub or or have friends explore this with me. We have some friends we have traveled with a lot who did the whale sharks with us, Kenny and Barb. And every time we're doing something, I'm like, gosh, I just wish Kenny and Barb were here to see this really cool mountain bike or snorkel these really cool places. So for me, I think that's probably the hardest, just the social aspect of it. I haven't ever thought about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just, well, yeah. Yeah. What I thought, what, what I think is strange still is, how many? Well, I mean, we're do, doing this long enough now that we'll see a lot of other camper vans in different places, Moab and, and whatever. But you know, a lot of times you won't see people outside, outside their vans or whatever, doing anything. So you can't even a lot of times just like go up and talk to somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. they're not outside, which sometimes I don't get. But. Uh, so I thought we'd talk to a lot more people that way. And we have talked to a lot of fun people, but uh, just not as much as I would expect. So it does get, yeah, it can get a little lonely, lonely at times, I guess. Yeah. It's like reading? almost like you need to make friends in each location kind of thing. Yeah, so know, every right? time you're yeah. like, hey, we're back. Let's hang out. Like, yeah. <laughs> Right. And I picked up reading again. And so he just thinks I'm playing on my phone whenever I'm reading a book. And he's like, I'm bored. It's like. I, when am I going to read? <laughs> I need you to go entertain yourself for a hot second. <laughs> Take Barry, throw the frisbee. Okay. <laughs> right. And Finish he does. My book. <laughs> we're going to go mountain bike. And I'm like, I'm fine. I need some me time. But yeah. Okay. That was the, the best part of the content trip is Austin and I were together like 24 yeah. seven. And then like, at least they would all go sleep in the other van. So I could sleep in the live van by myself. And I was like, yeah. okay, I got I got eight to myself at least, and it's the risk everybody else for the next twenty four hours kind of thing. So. Right. Right. Yeah. What would you say your hardest part is? Uh, man, I I don't know. I think generally just days seem shorter a lot of times. Um, I don't know. It, you know, like it's not always a, like a set schedule, I guess, and so like. You're doing something different most days, and so it's stuff just it just seems like it goes by really quickly. And so having to do like the mundane stuff of I don't know, shave your face and whatever, <laughs> you just don't want to do it. It's just like oh, I'd rather do something else. You know, there's stuff to see or something to do, and yeah, 
you know. And then you go two weeks without shaving your face. You're like, ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, uh, it's starting to look like Tom Hanks and Castaway. Yeah. <laughs> the everyday stuff that you normally don't care a whole lot about doing. It's really annoying <laughs> in van life. What's well, the nice like, thing about him shaving in van life is that he's not doing on a bathroom counter, so there's not whiskers everywhere. Right. He's outside the van. <laughs> Do yeah. it out, out the so, back of the van. Right. Yeah. So that's a plus for me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have a shower set, set up in your van? We have the back door one. The back door one? Okay. Yeah. 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 That's that's the one that I, I encourage people the most. Did I tell you guys my mile story about that? <laughs> no. After After Flagstaff? Mm-mm. So he he had never been to the Grand Canyon and we weren't picking up uh, the marketing kids until Monday. So I was like, let's go to the Grand Canyon. It's an hour and a half from where we are right now. You have to see the Grand Canyon in person. Like, I feel like that's a, I, I know we're using a little bit of gas, but like, you have to go do that. So we took, took him up there, saw the Grand Canyon, did the 20, 30 minutes that it really takes to take it all in. And then we were like, let's go find a spot in the woods, camp out in the National Forest, just south a little bit, went up, used Ioverlander. Went up a road, have, having the van super handy because you can just park it wherever you want, right? So yep. uh, definitely, yep. definitely went out a road that everybody else was also going out kind of thing. And we're like, <laughs> we'll just keep going until we find a spot. Found a great spot that was big enough for both those vans. And he was like, I'm going to take a shower. And I started looking around at the ground and I was like, are you, are you sure about that? Like, I don't, you don't have anything to stand on in the back of that van, do you? And he's like, nah, <laughs> it'll be fine. Oh, no. I was like, Let's all right, it. well, I'm going to read my book you enjoy your shower over there and he's like well don't come over here i don't have the shower i was like i don't want to see anything i will be over here you are full <laughs> private he took a shower and i think he took like a five ten minute shower no big deal right he spent 30 minutes cleaning his feet with dude oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no like well that that was my whole point i was like you can you'll get clean and first of all like it wasn't that bad that sunday like it wasn't that hot like we weren't bad yeah. um he was like you'll get clean but like your feet are gonna be awful yeah and in i was like was it worth it and he goes absolutely and i was like all right cool like you're on board <laughs> with it but like <laughs> i make sure every time i have a van now with a shower in the back that i have a piece i got a little two foot by two foot piece of teak decking that we can put on yep. the crown for the oh, kids yeah. to stand on yeah. uh, just yeah, we, the struggle yeah. is real yeah we have one of those like outdoor rugs and we'll yeah. put that down or we have one of those like bamboo. Yeah, mats. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you need something. It's got yeah. Just the spending three quarters of the time doing the wipes afterwards is not yeah. worth it. Right. Well, it's not like we had anything else to do that night either. It was like wait for it to get dark and look at stars. Like <laughs> yes. yeah, right. Burn bands. Make nights boring. <laughs> right. Um <laughs> trying to look at my list of questions that I have for you guys. Cause we already, we already really kind of have gone over what life is like with a big dog in the van. Yeah. It's fun. It's really yeah. Barry's van, isn't it? It is. I always joke. Like we got the van for Barry. We're just long for his adventures. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he likes coming home a whole lot. It's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's really boring. He didn't play as much. Yeah, we have a pool in the backyard here at my mom's house, and so he gets to swim and play fetch, but it's, you know, a backyard has a fence, and so it's not an infinite amount of running he can do. Where when we're camping, for the most part, he can just, like, go to town running. Right. Well, and, like, he's so good about just, he does run, but he stays nearby. Like, he's not, uh, he's yeah. not a crazy man. So, like, and I, our I don't know if you saw Reese came back over here and laid down a second ago, <laughs> but like, that's the same thing with him. The kids are like, Oh, Reese is going to get out. I was like, where's he going to go? He's yeah. never <laughs> right. like, there's an elementary school in the backyard. He runs out on the field and you're like, Reese, let's go inside. And he comes right back. Like he's not, yeah. Oh yeah, he's not a runaway yeah. threat. <laughs> the no. best is, or the biggest time we have to worry is that if, it, if we're playing fetch with him and he's getting hot and there's water nearby, because he will take off. It doesn't matter how far away that water is. If it's like three football fields, he will go, but he will definitely come back. <laughs> so whenever we're in Maine, we're at this beautiful wedding venue where some of my aunt and uncles were all were camping in our vans and trailers. And there's like houses around and we're at a lookout point close to the ocean. So we're playing fetch with him. And we are literally like two football, two, three football fields from the water. And he just takes off. And there's high grass. And so all you see is the top tip of his tail 
just yeah. going towards the water and he disappears for a while and then you see a tail <laughs> coming back and he's just drenched like so but he got like, his bath yep. yeah and that's the one time and i'm like his recall is not gonna work because he has an eye on the prize and he will come back <laughs> so it's just patience on our end at that point <laughs> He also only does that if he has whatever toy we're playing with. Oh yeah. Yeah. He would not if like if I have the ball, he would never ever leave, leave. That spot. <laughs> like it's never gonna happen. Once yeah. he has the possession. Yeah, that's the only time he does that. And then he's like, <laughs> I now have the power. I can do what yeah. I want. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Jenna gets kicked out of her seat. <laughs> always <laughs> gosh <laughs> i haven't seen the van with the canoe on top yet yeah that was uh that was before we got a blow up kayak canoe whatever and that makes more sense but uh it was actually it's surprisingly easy to get it up there <laughs> oh, you need help i'm like i don't think i can but <laughs> <laughs> it's more i'm just stabilizing it while he does all the hard work yeah well, that's great. Yeah, that's a nice setup. All right, we got we got to the end of the show, guys. Good job, you made it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I say I I put all your socials on here, so it's at Newman's Dog Training, mm-hmm. and yep. then at Adventure Dog Barry B A R R Y. Yep. Which, if you for the audio listener, we we call him Bear quite a bit, or Bear Bear. <laughs> Bear Bear. <laughs> Bear, Bear. <laughs> And he is named for HBO series Barry, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. So he's yes. also a little Barry. Barry. It's got to have the, the Eastern European accent attached to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which we butcher, but yes. <laughs> it's, it's completely fine. It's your dog. You can call it whatever you want. So anybody who judges you on that point uh, is a jerk. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> what well, they sweet. call their dog? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just... <laughs> well, mine's Reese because the kids thought he looked like he got dipped in peanut butter, so they were like, "He's peanut butter on the bottom, chocolate on the top." So Aww. they didn't want to call sense. him Reese's, so we just went with Reese. So. I like it. That works. Now he's just a black blur behind me because it's blurred out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he, we had him on the show. Uh, there's a guy down in Texas. Uh, he runs a rally school. His name's Dave Carpetian, and they also have. It's Rally Ready Driving School, which they do have campsites available down there. He's just a little south of Austin, if you guys want to go. I'll uh-huh. definitely hook you guys up with that one. Um, and then they also have a dog rescue because it's called Rally Rally Rescue because uh, there are so many dogs in rural South Texas that just people drive out of Austin, drop them, and they just wander onto his property all the time. So he oh, wow. he was kind of having an, uh, the pandemic kind of slowed it down a little bit, but like they just kind of collect dogs. Like I think he's got four or five, eight dogs always kind of on the property all the time kind of thing. That's so, amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'll definitely send you some contact info there so you guys can go down there and have some fun. Uh, you can, he'll probably let you drive rally cars too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Holding you to it. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely hook, you, hook that one up. So uh, I'm going to wrap the show up real fast. So you can rate review the show on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, a lot of it is Apple Podcasts, but uh, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, just about anywhere else. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. I forgot to tell you guys I posted on YouTube. So here's here's your heads up. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh cool. Oh, so everyone's going to see this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're, you're not the least bad looking person we've had on the show. So you're good. Like, you're totally good. <laughs> I'll take it. Top 10 for sure. Top 10 for sure. You're totally good. <laughs> <laughs> um and then so you guys are at newman's dog training uh, i've got jenna.a.newman as well there's lots of, of berry stuff on there and then adventure dog berry you can follow hooniverse the hooniverse on twitter the real hooniverse on instagram and then i i'm at overlanding dad we'll still plug ross even though he's not here he's no not like the one from friends on instagram <laughs> oh that's <laughs> funny yeah never changing it he's never going to <laughs> uh and if you want to reach out and talk about an intra- van, intra- adventure van woo. I don't know what other kind of van I was trying to describe there because that wasn't a word. So uh, you can shoot me an email, Chris at Van Do It. Let's talk. And then you can read what Ross and I write, still, sometimes, mainly Ross, not really me, at Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, and everyday driver. And I kind of, I used to write for US News and World Report cars, and I haven't done that in two months. So I'm not, <laughs> not going to list that one. So that's it. We did a show. Thank you guys. Yay. Yes. Thank you. Hope.